everyone, Tony Winston here for Jazz Piano College, and I was playing along with a CD of this uh, book the other day, the Jamie Abersold book, Horace Silver, Volume 17, and uh, oh, I was having so much fun, and I thought I was sounding so good, and uh, so I looked to see who was playing on the uh, on the play along track, and it's uh, Al Foster on drums, and then Ron Carter on bass, and uh, Kenny Barron on piano. Anyway, they just they make you sound good. It's so much fun to play along with these CDs. I'm going to cover two songs today, Yesterdays by Jerome Kern and Song for My Father. And uh, before I do that, though, I want to thank all my uh, subscribers over there on Patreon. If you'd like to join, you can do that for just, you know, a couple dollars a month. Very easy to do, or more if you like. And uh, it really helps this channel keep going. And without any further ado, let's get into today's video on Song for My Father and Yesterdays. We're going to talk a little bit about the Lydian dominant scale. We're going to talk a little bit about how the blue scale and the diminished scale have some things in common. A blue scale that maybe you know pretty well to, you know, get that sound of a diminished scale, which you might not know quite as well. All right, so let's take song from my father first. This is a song that really you can't hardly find any place to really use the diminished scale effectively, and let's talk about why. The reason is there's no two five ones really in this song. It starts off in F minor with this little riff. And uh, I have another video I did it, oh, a couple years ago on how to play this, uh, the head to this song. But real briefly, um, if you aim for your third finger on the key notes, Uh, you can uh, execute those little turns pretty uh, pretty well doing it that way. And then, of course, the rhythm. And here is a C suspended chord. Call it B flat over C. You could call it G minor over C. You could call it B flat major seventh over C, but that really kind of isn't quite the, the chord. Um, lots of ways that this chord could be written. And then back to F minor. And we'll call this F minor nine. And if you have F minor nine, it's not like this chord, just adding a nine. F minor nine means it has a seven in it already, and then you add the nine to it. Then the bridge is an E flat nine, and that means E flat seven, and E flat seven, of course, is a dominant chord, All right? That makes it dominant there, that flat seven, and you add the nine to it, and then back to F minor nine, and then E flat, nine again and it kind of moves quickly down through a d flat seven but ends here on a like a c sus then we have like a c altered chord and this is one of those rootless voicings i sometimes call them box voicings this is box two and i've got a zillion videos about this in fact i just put one up about this exact same shape so just a few days ago. So it's a C altered, and it's going to move to an F minor 11. And that also means F minor 7. There's my 7. There's my 9. Doesn't have to have the 9 in it, but um, has to have the 7. And there's the 11. And the third's way down there, and there is no 5, but the bass is moving back and forth between the root and the fifth. So there you go. All right, now, soloing on this song and where to use the diminished scale. Nowhere, really. The F minor, you've got a couple of uh, pentatonic scales. You could use A flat pentatonic. That's the one that sounds the most like F minor. You could use E flat pentatonic. See, that's kind of nice because it gives you the nine there. See? And there's one other one you can use too. It gives you the 13, like the B flat. 
See, that one avoids the, the minor third, so it sounds the least like F minor, but it's still going to sound pretty good. Now, when you get to a dominant chord, um, E flat, of course, is a good one. And also, um, let's see, there's another one, uh, D flat will work too. And what scale are we talking about here? It's just the mixolydian. It's like an E flat major scale with a flat seven. And that's really about the best scale for this, this particular spot in the song. Here is a perfect place, D flat. To use a scale that I haven't heard very many people talking about. Uh, you know, I hear a lot about the diminished scale, I hear a lot about the altered scale and the blues scale, but we don't hear much about the Lydian dominant scale. And there's lots of times when the altered scale just sounds wrong. Like in this particular song, it does not sound right in that particular spot. See? It just, you know, just, I don't know, it's got too many notes that just don't jive with F, you know, because we're in the key F minor, so. Um, so we're going to use a thing called the Lydian dominant scale. All right, now a tritone away would be the G altered scale. And it's the same notes as that. In fact, it's the same notes as A flat minor melodic ascending. All right. Um, best way to think of it is just like a Lydian scale. There's that note is the Lydian, it's the flat five. And then it's got the five in it, so maybe we should have should have called that the sharp four. But you know, it's 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 jazz. It's got to be a call to flat five. Then we got the five, the six, and the flat seven, right? Because D flat major has got that. So that's the flat seven. And that's the Lydian dominant scale. Let's look at it and see. Lydian part, dominant part. D flat. And see, it's got pieces of the F blue scale in there. In fact, if you just play the blue scale and leave out the five, just go right to that, then you, you know, you're playing part of that Lydian dominant. Once you get to C, you can go put the C back in there and you've got the regular blue scale. So. All right, that's a little bit about improv on uh, Song for My Father. One thing I don't talk about too much um, is uh, rhythm. And rhythm is one of those things I don't really think that much about. It just comes from listening to jazz and, and kind of understanding that you don't want to just usually end right on the downbeat on one. Like, like if you were playing... Uh, See, right there, I ended my, my, uh, my line there, not on the, on the one, but on the and of four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. See, three, four and. Or if you end on the end of two, one and two and three and four and one and two and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Yeah, yeah, and then the chord also would be better if you played that on the and too. I played it on one that time, but one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. 
And a lot of times, if you come up with a good run and it ends on one, just, you know, just take out one of the notes and end early. Like if you went one and two and three and four and one and two and three, you know, you're ending right there on three. That's not as hip as ending on the end of two or the end of three. So one and two and three and four and five and six. You know, I took out one note and ended there a little bit early and, uh, you know, by displacing your lines a little bit, you, you will have a better uh, rhythmic feel for this kind of music, whether it's a Latin thing like what I'm doing here or a swing tune. And let's take a nice swing tune, which is Yesterday's by Jerome Kern. And I'd love to just do the Art Tatum thing. But uh, that's b above my pay grade, so no Art Tatum today. Hi folks, up here editing the video now. And one thing you could really do to help out the channel please hit the like button. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I really appreciate it if you do that. It really helps the channel out a lot. Thanks so much. Um, this song has always given uh, me a, a few little problems in the second line. Let's just take the song first. It says D minor. All right, so of course we can make that a D minor six. We can make it a D minor seven or even a... D minor major seven. Let's just start with D minor seventh. And then we're going to go to E minor seven. That's an easy chord because it's all white keys, but it says flat five, so I'm going to flat the five. And then we've got A7 with a flat nine, and I can get there just by moving one note. See, A, that's A7, and there's the flat nine. So E minor, A, seven with a flat nine, and there's no root there. But, you know, in the middle of a 2-5-1, you don't need the root. People, you know, it's such a strong progression that, that everybody understands, uh, you know, what the harmonic scheme is here. And notice, too, that one, two, three, four, and, you know, I pushed that, that whole note into the first measure there, so it was on the and of four. So one and two and three and four and one, two, three. Three, four, one, two, three. Now here, you always want to have another chord before you get to the, the B. You know, it'd be nice if there's a way to make it four chords there. But you, you know, you get there too early. So one thing you could do is start with a little nine there. that makes it work. Another thing you could do is hang off on that first change, hang, hang back on it. Uh, another thing you could maybe do is harmonize the shit out of it. Uh, what would it be? Something like maybe like... Uh, using a bunch of flat fives there, so. And here I'm thinking C sharp seventh flat five, and then F sharp seven flat five, and you know, C sharp, F sharp goes to B. And there are undoubtedly better ways to do that, but that's all the time we're going to spend on it for today. And one thing you could do is just play D minor. And just go right to it, you know, don't worry about too many of those changes. All right. Now, the reason I picked this song is this would be a good song to put a lot of Lydian dominant scales in. Not on the A7, because that says A plus 7. That's usually an altered chord. The plus means a sharp 5. A sharp 5 is this note. That's really, in jazz terms, a, and a flat 13. You know, some kind of chord like that. All right. And so the altered scale is going to work the best there. But once you get to all these other ones, see that's D7 with a nine. We got G7 with a 13. These are all unaltered in, uh, tensions. And there we've got C7 with a nine, C minor seven and F7. So let's look at that D7, G7, C7 thing there. We got like this. So look, I'm gonna put in the sharp 11. You know, I'm gonna put a triad above the D on an E. 
like that. And then on G, I'm going to do the same thing. And on C, I'm going to do the same thing. All right. So when you do that, it really suggests the Lydian dominant. See? You got the B flat there and the F sharp there, and everything else is a white key, so Lydian dominant. So on a D, it's like that. It's got these two black keys here. And then with a G7, uh, just that one black key. And then C, we've got two black keys here. Yeah. And I gotta gotta just you know, remind you now, if you, if you know minor melodic ascending scales or you know altered scales, you know this scale too. It's just kind of a different mode of that scale. Like for instance, there's D. If I want to tritone away, that's the altered scale. But here, using it as a D, it's the Lydian dominant scale. It has a really different sound than the altered scale, too, you know, because it doesn't, doesn't have all those altered intervals like the flat 9, the sharp 9, and the flat 13. It does have the sharp 11, but everything else is going to be an unaltered interval. Lots of little patterns you could put in there too. Check this out. You got D, you know, do like an A minor and the E triad. This is similar to an Art Tatum riff here. Like that. And you can do the same thing on G, use the A triad. And right there is like the fifth, the seventh, and the ninth. So. Same thing. And then we get to C minor. And there's the place for the diminished scale right on that F dominant there. Anytime you've got a two, five, one, especially in a major key, uh, you know, B flat being the major key there. The diminished scale on F will work really well. And, you know, there's some blues in there. I don't know where exactly, like, uh, okay. You know, you can start the blue scale from there, from there, from there. Yeah, eh, use a little bit of C, C blues like that. Even that will work. See? <laughs> Let's see if that works. Yeah, you know, by uh, using C, all right, let's, let's think about this for a second. We got a, got a two, five, one and B flat. So we're going to start in C minor, and we can use, start using the blues scale. And on F seventh, keep that blue scale in there, and it gives you a little bit of the diminish. See? Now up here, it's not really, but but you know, it sounds pretty good. All right, so we just found a new way to get through those two five ones. Whatever chord you start on, just use the blues scale till you get home to B flat. Let's do a little bit of rootless voicing work on this tune. Uh, let's take D minor. That's a D minor six nine chord. Six nine. And then here, this is not really a rootless voicing, but. It's a, a hip sounding voicing. And then if we move that up exactly a minor third, we'll get the two five. See, this is one of these chords that functions in different ways. Here it's a minor seven flat five, because I have E there. If I had F sharp here, it'd be F sharp altered. If I had C, it'd be C ninth. I think I went over this a lot the other day, but right now we're using it as E. And then we're gonna go to A by moving this up a minor third. This goes a fourth here, yeah, but this goes a minor third, and then back to our D minor. We do that again. And then we start our D minor, you know, progression. That could be B minor seven flat five. You know, it's like this one. I moved it down here. 
All right, now since that's the root, you know, I could go either way. I could go unaltered and go something like this, or I could go altered and do something like that. Then A7, now that's an altered chord, so I'll do this one. Just down a half step there, see? And then if I went down another half step, I'd have G altered, but I don't want that, so I'm gonna go this way. Now I just used that chord as B minor seven flat five, but now it's G seven. Right. And then here we go. And I could just change this note, but I'm gonna put that in there because it helps the diminished scale a little bit. Because see, you got a diminished chord right there if you do that. And that could be B flat major seventh. And then I'm gonna play just a plain old good old chord there. And there too, you know? Yeah, I mean, just because you're playing rootless voicings doesn't mean every one has to be rootless. You know? Change it around a little bit. Let's go through the song and jam it out a little bit. One, two, one, two, three. Now, here I'm using D, 6, 9, and it's exactly the same chord as B here, so I really need to do something. All right, so what did I do? All right, so using like... Uh, like a, that kind of locked hand style where you do diminished chords in between, so I did that. And there, you know, I played the exact notes of the chord, all right? That'll make it sound different. Right, so you don't really want to use uh, D minor 6, 9 all the way up to the B minor 7 flat 5 because they're the same chord. D minor 6 and B minor 7 flat 5, same chord. So you, if you want harmonic motion, use D minor 7th. All right, now on to A. All right, now you're not going to learn anything by a guy showing off. Let me show you what I was doing there. A uh, altered, all right? It's like a B flat minor melodic ascending. Here I'm using the Lydian dominant. And again, the Lydian dominant. And then again, the Lydian dominant. And it really helps to know where the triads are in all those scales. Like here, you've got a triad on like, uh, no, what do you got? B, B flat minor and C minor. You've also got some major triads in there too, someplace. Yeah, F and E flat. So, you know, you can, that triad, that triad, and make patterns. All right, that's for the A. And then we're gonna get to D. And I think I went over this a minute ago, but like A minor and E there will work. And here we've got A major and D minor. See? A major, D minor, and just... major and G minor and you know it's it's kind of hard to remember all those little things but um, um, what you want to do is think about it while you're practicing so that when you're when you're you know just playing your fingers kind of know where to go and you know you've 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 thought about it enough that you you can get there without thinking you know I'm not gonna think about it <laughs> Was that that was you know the E flat 
They say, oh, look, E flat seventh and A altered. Same same chord there. So you know, E flat pentatonic will work there. Let me say something too about these box voicings that I did not say the other day. E minor seven flat five. No matter what you're using this chord for, if you're using it for C dominant or F sharp altered or uh, whatever else it is, G minor six nine or E minor seven flat five, the same scale works with every one of those. With C, it would be what you'd call the Lydian dominant. With E minor, you call that the uh, uh, Locrian sharp two. With the G minor six nine, it's the, it's the melodic minor ascending. You see, it's all the same notes. Which one do I leave out? F sharp? Yeah, altered. All right? It's, it's the same notes. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not really thinking about, like, which, which mode of the minor melodic scale I'm using. I'm just knowing that whenever I play this chord, these notes work, no matter how I'm using that chord, whether it's a minor 7 flat 5 or a dominant chord or whatever. And so I can do that when I go through this. All right? Whatever you want to call that chord, this scale works. All right? You can, whatever. Let's do a little reharm on this line. Go to A minor first, then D7. And then when you get to G, D minor first, and then G7 and then G minor first, and then C7. So I put in, in front of every dominant chord, I put a, a minor seven chord. What comes before D7? A minor seven. What comes before G7? D minor seven. So it's real easy to do, you know. You get to G7, you just change it to a minor, and you've got the two chord that precedes the C. Yeah. So starting with A, This is unaltered here. All right, so that's a really great place to use Lydian dominant. And you know, the old timers, they didn't think of this as a Lydian dominant scale. They just thought of it as a, you know, dominant scale with the flat five in there. And you know, when you're using these scales, you want to take advantage of that. So a D scale with a flat seven and put that flat five in. Right there, you're on the flat five. All right, well, man, I tell you, I was rambling my way through this video, but I hope you all got something out of it, and I'll try to put some of the uh, most important points down there in the uh, description, and I'm sure there'll be a PDF or a printout that will accompany this video. Mm -hmm.